Welcome back to Sipa Spimmer Garage. This time we will finally install my M52 NA project. The one that should make 300 horsepower one day. Well, one day. <laughs> it probably won't do that soon. But anyways, it will go to, into this. This is my 1995 E36 320i. Or it was. Or well, it's still 320i. But I have swapped in the 2.8 liter engine in this the N52B28, the single valve one, and all the drivetrain and brake parts and everything. So this is basically like 328i now. And then this, this has the M3 body kit and everything. So yeah, <laughs> this is my old, old beast. I have owned this since 2006. Yeah, so, oh, oh my God, <laughs> almost 20 years now. So yeah, I have had this quite a long time and you might have seen this in my early videos. But since those, this has just been waiting here to get some inspiration or something. But anyways, now when the engine is ready, I think we will get this stock one running. Stock one running. <laughs> this isn't the stock engine for this, of course, because I have puppet in the 2.8 liter one. But anyways, I have now returned all the stock parts to this engine. So we will put this back together as stock. We will run it. And once that's okay, we will pull it out and I will sell that and swap in the new engine. So yeah, I think maybe we just start doing that. So <laughs> I will put back on the missing pieces from that engine and we will try to start that. And once that's okay, maybe we take this outside and swap the engines. Yeah, that's how it's now. There's now stock cams here, stock intake, well stock everything. <laughs> so nothing special here. Uh, it looks like th that I'm really only missing the valve cover and to install the intake. So let's do that and try starting this. I have like replaced all the seals, one of, one of seals every, everywhere, basically new seals when I have put this together as stock. So, so yeah, somebody will get quite good engine from this. I was thinking that I will leave this for me as a spare, but uh, all the only thing that I can use as a spare for my E34 for example is the, really the crank, nothing else. I have some heads and blocks and everything, so yeah, it's not really worth that because these are quite expensive en engines now, so <laughs> I think it's better just to sell this and let someone else to enjoy this engine.
okay, it's back together, it's missing some bits and pieces here and there, but that's fine, this all will come out next. But let's try starting this. Uh, but, uh, I will try to crank this over without the ECU first to see that it, this actually builds oil pressure and everything's fine. And then we will connect the ECU and try to run this. So let's try. I have to put in fresh battery or at least better than <laughs> this one had. So let's see. Hmm, oil pressure light stays on to have the sensor in. Uh, it should be. Yeah. Do I have any oil? There should be some. Let's put more. Okay, now it goes off. Let's put on the ECU to see if it runs. loud there's only <laughs> exhaust manifolds there but that's fine it runs uh, maybe I'll put some coolant or well I don't need coolant I will just put water and take this outside and see that it doesn't overheat or anything Okay, the engine runs fine. I didn't notice anything strange in that, so I think that's fine for next owner. It starts great, it revs nicely and everything, so I think that's fine. I did put this now on the lift for this engine swap to be easier, because in the E36, the sump is behind this frame right here, or this subframe here, so if you try to pull out the engine with the transmission, it will always hit here, so it's really pain in the ass to <laughs> get out with the transmission in the E36. You can also do it like so that you will take the whole front end, front end off here, and then loosen this subframe and pull it out like that, but uh, it's too much work, especially, well, it's not hard to take this apart, but after that you will be relying all these body parts for like two days after that, so <laughs> I don't want to do that. So, because I have the lift, I have decided so that I will just pull out the trans on the lift, that's quite easy to do, doesn't take much, and then I can just pull this out directly up and on it here, so... That should be the easiest way. Uh, looking at this car, it doesn't like the sitting in the inside. I don't know, the AC compressor, it seems to be leaking out all the fluids and oils. And the uh, looks horrible, I need to get the new compressor at least. Then it looks like... I don't know why, I think this looked fine when I parked this, but these are like really corroded everywhere. Well, yeah, I think that's fine, but for some reason these control arms, these are totally gone, so I need to replace these. Looks like these 
Rappers has been cracked, so I need to replace those, but yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much everything you have in the E36 front end, so not much to replace. I think we have E31s there on the shelf that are basically identical to these, but they don't have rubber isolated altered joints, so I think it's just better to use the E31s. So I will just swap in those. These I did know I have scraped this quite badly and applied some poor paint here, but I think this is just fine with, with some sand blasting and new paint. Same here, also a little bit sand blasting needed here, not bad. This looks quite bad, but actually this is like just surface rust. Here I can see that there's some proper rust here, so I need to fix those jacking points. Same here. I did Remember, I have been even welding this really badly some point, so that needs to be fixed. Going backwards, I still have the 320i exhaust in this. Uh, the stock muffler, it did rot out, so I have this stainless steel one here. Uh, this is okay, I'm not really fan of this, but it has worked okay. But of course, with the new engine, I need to make new exhaust system here. The rear end looks fine, I don't see like, just a little bit surface rust here, but nothing critical. That would be good to fix, but not mandatory. I think that I can see that these coilover bossings, this has been cracked also, so I need to get the new bottom ends or something. I don't know. I would like to have have even like airbags in this because I love because I like the E36 is really low, but <laughs> I don't want to be adjusting the height all the time to get the MOT jacket and everything. So I would like to have bags on this, but I don't know if I ever have money money for that. But this at least need to be fixed. But yeah, let's pull out the exhaust and then the trans and. Then lift up the ending, it shouldn't take that long. All the bolts are off and I think that everything is disconnected from the trans, so let's try opening this.
Okay, now I have room here to lift this up directly. Next we need to disconnect foil lines, uh, hoses and engine modes. And yeah, then it's pretty much it. We can lift this up. That's one piece, hopefully, but it starts to be late today, so I will continue tomorrow. Okay, everything should be off, so I think this should now come up as one lamp. Everything is still connected to the engine, but everything is from, disconnected from the car. Uh, this AC line, no, it's can bend there, so yeah. Let's get the apple picker and hope this will lift up easily. Then we need to remove the exhaust manifolds from this and the AC bracket and then the alternator at least the power steering pump pump won't fit so yeah and then the engine mounts also but then it's pretty much everything from this one Well, that didn't go well. I did actually get this AC bracket here through the AC condenser, so <laughs> I need to get new one. But well, that, that was already crummy looking, so that's fine. I will get the new one. And yeah, now I need to get off these headers and some of, the, some of the stuff, and we can set this aside. I will start it. <coughs> I will start it. I will start with these headers and make my new better ones later. Problem in these is that these lambda sensor locations are completely off, like you can see this is sitting here. So I will also need to move these to another location, maybe on here and yeah, here. So. Okay, I think I now have everything I need from this one, so let's put this aside and get the new one on the hoist. I bolt on the engine supports and the headers, because those are much easier to bolt when the engine is off. And then we will lower that in, put in the clutch and transmission and yeah, go from that.
Next job is to install these headers, these ones. These are equivalent headers, but uh, I do not like the design. <laughs> I don't know if these will, will work well or not. I guess not. I think these are better than the stock, but not much else. I would really like to have like S50 headers on this one, but I don't have these at the moment. So yeah, these will go in. I did already weld this lambda sensor to better location. The other one, one is fine, it's not perfect, but it's fine at least, so yeah. Let's throw this in. This will be really annoying job because these tubes are so that you cannot really reach all the bolts here, so this will take some time, so yeah. Probably skip filming this. The headers are finally bolted in for good, so uh, I think it's finally time to drop this in the engine bay and see if everything fits. I'm pretty sure everything fits, but yeah, you never know. Okay, next up it's time for the clutch and the transmission and starter and stuff like that. I don't know if this is enough for the high compression engine. Uh, the diesel has 2 kilowatt starter, this is 1.4 kilowatts, so let's see if this can turn the engine. If it doesn't, I will need to swap maybe to M57 starter, but let's see. The transmission is the classic ZF. S5D320T, so, so pretty much everyone knows this transmission. This works fine, nothing wrong in that, so this will go as it is now. Then the clutch, uh, I had this in the car, so this is the single mass fly wheel from E34520i, uh, so from M50. It fits of course the M52 also. Uh, the problem in this is Okay, there's a couple of problems. First of all, this fly field, this is really heavy, even though it's single mass, this is really heavy and thick. So, uh, so this is even worse than the dual mass fly wheel. And also, also this glass disc, this is really tiny, so it doesn't hold much. I think this was really struggling with the old engine that I had here. I felt this to slip a couple of times and so on, so I don't want to put this back in. This could be fine if I machine this to the bigger uh, clutch disc and different clutch set of wall. I have seen people to do that, so that's one option, but it's not going to happen now. So this will go away. There's no really better clutches or anything available for these ones. This is one option. This is the old clutch setup from Petris T1. It has now completely different gearbox and clutch setup, so this is basically free now. And this is like really heavy single mass flywheel for the bigger 240mm clutch discs. So in that sense, this is really good. We have this sintered disc there and then of course the SUX SRE uh, pressure plate. So in future this would be really good, just combined with the regular clutch disc like this. And, and this won't be needing all the pressure that this SRE clutch has, so I think it would be better to swap to the regular M5 pressure plate instead of this SRE one to be more pleasant to use. So that's why this is not going to in. And also it, it could be that this is really light, this is like really really light, as you can see that this is like basically nothing. So. Before we actually tune the engine, it, it, this could be really pain in the ass to drive also, so 
Again, this could happen in the future. This is really worn and this has been resurfaced a couple of times, but I think, but yeah, this seems fine now after resurfacing, so it should be fine. But let's see. So for now, I think I will go with the most boring option. So this is this. So this is basically the stock clutch setup for M52 P28 engines. These are a little bit worn. This seems to be a little bit glazed, but I don't see. But I don't feel any high or low spots here, so this is fine. This hasn't seen much use at all, so this should be fine also. And yeah, this seems fine too, so yeah, I think I will throw this in. This is of course quite nice to use, and well, it's not the perfect clutch feel because it's a dual mass flywheel, but yeah. At least for now I don't have any better option. Let's see what I will do in the future for this car, but for now this will go in. I just need to find the longer bolts for this because <laughs> all the bolts, bolts that seem to be here are for the single mass fly wheels, not for the dual masses. Oh, we need pilot bearing. Two. Back inside, let's try throwing back stuff on this engine until we any more can't. So I'm thinking of these water hoses first. These are of course with these quick disconnects, like these are on E39 and E46 and so on. E36 of course doesn't have this kind of quick disconnects, so we need to get creative with the water hoses. This lower one here. This is easy. These engines came also in Z3, which is basically E36. And there's this kind of hose. Oh, sorry. I think this is not original, but gate should be fine. So this connects here. Maybe I move the camera. This, and it, it has the outlet directly at the correct side. So yeah, this is really easy. But I will not push this in yet, because I need to have all the pulleys and belts and everything here. And I'm at least missing the tensioner here, so this will go on last. And then this upper hose, the Z3, it has different kind of radiator than my E36 has. This has the integrated uh, expansion tank, but the Z3 doesn't. So the hose from that comes up much further here. 
So there isn't really plug and play hose here, so I need to make one. I'm thinking of I will let's drop in the radiator. So this is the original hose. It would go in like this. And then I have this hose from E39 that has the quick disconnect. And it also has this bleeding screw here, which makes the bleeding of the engine much e easier. So I'm thinking that I will put this here, cut off this hose, and then cut piece from this hose to fit here. So I don't know, it seems like there's twist in there, but let's see if we can make this work. Okay, that looks great. Next we have these hoses in the back. So these are for the heater core and then this would be for the radiator expansion tank. Oh, I just noticed there's actually three. We have two outlets and we have three places to have the hoses. I'm thinking this is the one that is in the M52 is in the back. So this needs to go here, but then this, this and this go in the expansion tank and there's only one hose so I think I need to make some kind of T piece here so connector from here to here and then T piece to here so that I can actually make this work. Uh, I had this to get the connectors, these ones. This is some cheap one again, I don't remember even which one. This was like 20 euros only to get the connectors. I was thinking to put one here and one here. But I think for now I can only do this one here because I need to figure out TPs and have these. So yeah, let's do this one and then skip to next thing. The hose is now in there, that looks fine. I did put on some smaller bits and pieces here, here and there, but I think for now I'm running out of things to <laughs> actually that I can put here. Uh, wiring would be next, but I'm still missing that. So I need to make that first. I also need the intake here. After that, I don't have the intake yet either. Uh, then let's look at the other things. I have the alternator from the old engine, uh, Bosk one. I have the MRT engineering bigger pulley here for these Bosk star alternators. Uh, but <laughs> of course I forgot to take that with me, so I first need to swap out that and then I can install this uh, AC bracket. This I need to clean and get new tensioner. Uh, power steering reservoir is fine, but I need another bracket for that. The one that is with the E39, I need the hoses that are basically same as E39. Then uh, the power steering pump, wait a minute. This one. 
This should be the correct power steering pump. This is for the oil filter housings that has the plastic filter thing. I previously had the metal one and those use different kind of offset in these power steering pumps. So I cannot use that pump. This seems to be the only one that we have that is the correct, but I think this might be the really noisy one from my E39 and it has cracked pulley and everything. So, <clears throat> so I'm thinking of getting a new one or uh, maybe another one or something like that because I remember this being really noisy, so I don't want to use this one. But I can use these brackets if I decide to get the refurbished one because those usually come without these. But yeah, I need to take a list what I'm missing and get those before I come here next time. But yeah, I think this episode is long enough, so I will stop here and, and let's hope next time we will finish up the engine install and maybe get this running for the first time. That will probably take a while, but I will hope that it will happen before the snow gets here and winter and everything, so maybe we can try this <laughs> on the dry land.